This is the actual Dynamic Forms program file. It contains the Dynamic Forms class and the Render Engine class that really does a lot of the low-level work. You can really learn a lot from just studying the, the program file itself. I have included some links at the top of the program that um, direct you back to the uh, VFPX site where you can find the Dynamic Forms project. And I've included a link to the discussion group where you could join and post your questions there. Um, one of the best things you can probably learn from this program file is to study the markup syntax that's used in this example. I'll, I'll run the sample. The program is a ready to run sample. You literally just hit the run button and it will, it will generate this form from the markup syntax. And you can learn a lot really just by studying the attributes that are used in this example. I tried to kind of put together a, um, an overall uh, group of helpful attributes that I feel like most people would use in laying out a form. Another interesting thing about the program sample at the top is that it shows that um, we can also bind to private or publicly declared variables and that's how the sample runs so it doesn't require to connect to a database or, or a table or a business object. So I've simply created my own business object up here and added several properties to it and I've defined some private and public variables that are bound to in the form. You'll see that the control source is in the first field and then the attributes follow and again I've used the text and in text markup block which I think is, is helpful for seeing your styling and seeing the individual attributes that you've applied there. So if you just study some of those, you'll see the, the pattern for applying these attributes to the Fox Pro object, as well as some of the kind of post-processing after the form, after the data is uh, set up and, and the, the properties are set on the individual form. You can call the render method, which will, it doesn't actually show the form yet. It does all the processing of the markup. At that time, you will get a return value indicating if everything rendered properly. And this is, this is kind of a detailed way of going through and, and making sure that, it, that everything worked well. And so you can test that result. And if it is, you can call the show method on the form, which will make it appear. And if not, you can, uh, in whatever way you want to deal with, with rendering errors or, or binding errors back to your properties or variables, uh, you have an opportunity to deal with that at runtime in your actual application code. If there are any rendering errors that occur from your markup, there are a couple of ways you can learn about errors. There's that um, call to the get errors as string which will return a string value back which you can analyze yourself or display in maybe in developer mode and, and read it and analyze what's going wrong. And there's an error collection which is a little bit more of a sophisticated way to dig in but there is a, an error collection object on the render engine which you can really drill into and uh, get some feedback about each individual control. Those things are documented on the uh, wiki pages of the dynamic forms pages on VFPX. And uh, every time the form is closed, it returns um, a value from the command buttons that were used. If those were used to um, close the form, uh, those are returned in a property called C return that you'll see here. And you can test uh, for the, uh, the caption of those buttons is returned back as a string value from the form. So you will know what the user clicked to close the form. Uh, if they use the X button, then the form will just be closed out and you won't even have a form object anymore. So the, 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 the program file is a good uh, example of how it can be used at runtime to, to really integrate as a fluid part of your uh, form handling in your business apps. So after the sample code at the top of the program file, if you scroll down further, you'll see the actual class definitions within the file. There are actually two primary classes defined here. One is the main dynamic form form class that you'll work with, and the other major one is the dynamic form render engine class, and that's where this thing is really processed and to uh, make all the uh, rendered controls come up onto the form. And you'll see many properties here that you can use to override, uh, for instance, some of the uh, markup delimiters and um, you can also set some of the basic default control sizes that are rendered and you can also uh, determine some of the default UI controls that would be used um, from your markup when you call for some of the basic native classes.
So one of the things I want to really encourage you to do is to spend some time reading the Dynamic Forms page on the VFPX code site, CodePlex site. Uh, I have spent a good bit of time trying to document the various aspects of this markup attribute syntax and some examples of how you can create different layout stylings. Uh, the, the documentation links are, are pretty granular, so hopefully you can navigate your way around the site pretty well. I'm just going to scroll down it as I talk here. Here's the markup example we looked at earlier. Um, in particular, um, this basic usage area will walk you through the seven steps that you will have to go through to kind of get a form alive. Um, it, it sounds like a lot maybe, but once you see the, the pattern, I think it will be very easy to follow. You'll also see a reference to the uh, binding that you can do. We did in these demos binding to a cursor. But you can actually bind in the same exact way to a data object. So if you work in an environment where you um, um, have your data perhaps uh, scattered from rows in a table over to a, a business object of some sort, uh, the syntax is exactly the same. You just will use the O data object property instead of the C alias property to indicate what you're binding to. Then there's um, some more details about the attributes and their names and the, the, the styling of the attribute. Uh, markup syntax itself and um, you can also go in and override the the delimiters that are used in um, these attribute names and and there's a link that will detail how you can go in and do that if you prefer maybe to use a dot in front of the attribute name and an equal sign for the property name you can do that in the uh, in the search engine as you create your own subclass of the thing. So uh, there are many examples that show you the, the various uh, ways you can apply these attributes just like you would the actual FoxPro properties that they represent. And there's a section that details uh, the handful of custom attributes that are used to um, have some special effects and, and flow control of the form itself. Um, there's some diagrams that show some of the uh, almost imaginary columns that can be used uh, to create different styling effects. Um, there are properties that are borrowed from the HTML world such as um, margins for the top and bottom and left and all of these allow you to have a very fluid like um, control over how your form is going to come out and if you've done any work at all in web pages it would it should be um, very familiar to you there here's the the row example that we showed earlier um, and there are other things uh, render if so there's some ways that you can have controls in your markup that are conditionally rendered at runtime based on um, a call to an expression that you can use um, there's an attribute that allows you to set control um, focus to a particular control out of the markup group by using the set focus attribute. Uh, you can do absolute positioning of controls. If you know specifically where you want to locate a particular control, you can just use the native top and left properties, width, height, all of those will be passed along from your markup onto the rendered control. So um, please read through the documentation. Um, there is a link at the top of the page that has a user group where we field uh, discussions and suggestions for enhancements. Um, there, I tried to be as helpful as I could. If you happen to have some errors in your markup for some reason that the uh, engine cannot figure out, uh, those are listed in red, and, and I try to show you what part of the markup uh, couldn't be processed properly. So uh, please join the user group, and I'd love to uh, get some questions from you and get some input from you guys about how you're using this in your applications and see if we can uh, in, uh, enhance it for you to make it easy to use and to work with.